Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church. Today is Easter Sunday, and we celebrate that Christ is risen. The tomb is empty, and we are beloved children of God. Whether you are at Grace or participating by live stream or recorded video, we pray this time of worship helps grow your faith and connect you to God. Please look at the welcome folder at the end of your row of chairs and complete the information there and pass it on. We use these to help stay in touch with you. And there are also prayer request forms in the front of those folders. If there are any prayer requests that you'd like included in our prayers at worship this morning, please use one of those forms. And the ushers will collect those during the first song. Next Sunday, April 7th, is Sticky Church, which is an intergenerational, interactive worship and learning time for all ages. So we invite you to come at 9 o'clock to hear about what Jesus means when he tells Peter to feed his sheep and what it means to give our hearts to God. I think that's all I have for this morning. I believe Randy has... A, there he is. So Randy <laughs> has an announcement for us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I would just like to give a shout out to all the guys here that helped this morning for the Easter breakfast. We served over 100 people. So back to them. We also put some pastry and donuts and things, whatever, from the, sir, uh, from the meal in the narthex. So whoever wants any to take home or whatever, please clean those up for us. And if any of you smell um, food in the worship space today, that's because you still do because we have our clothes and we've been cooking in it. So anyways, <laughs> you'll know who we are. So a shout out. thanks again to everyone. It was a real success. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Randy, for organizing that for us. So. I invite you to stand as you're comfortable doing so and to join in the call to worship. Happy Easter. Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday we thought all was lost. Yesterday we thought Jesus was gone. Today we know that love has won. Today we know that hope is real. Today we know that Jesus is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Sing we to 
God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt clouded their minds. Negativity took root, and hope vanished with a simple shake of their heads. As we turn to this Easter story, help us to hear the good news. Open our ears that we may hear the sound of alleluias. Open our minds that the mystery and joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open our hearts that we might believe the unbelievable. Like Peter, may we move closer to you. God of the empty tomb, we are hungry for your good news. Speak to us now. With hope in our hearts, we listen and we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism John preached. You know about Jesus of, of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around doing good and healing, everyone oppressed by the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand, who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. I want to call your attention to the good news that I preached to you, which you also received and in which you stand. You are being saved through it if you hold on to the message I preached to you unless somehow you believed it for nothing. I passed on to you as most important what I also received. Christ died for our sins in line with the scriptures. He was buried and he rose on the third day in line with the scriptures. He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once. Most of them are still alive to this day, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and the last of all he appeared to me, as if I were born at the wrong time. I'm the least important of the apostles. I don't deserve to be called an apostle, because I harassed God's church. I am what I am by God's grace. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to stand for the gospel reading as you're comfortable doing so. And our gospel reading for this Easter Sunday is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the human one must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. In our time preparing for Easter this year at Grace, we joined the disciple Peter on his faith journey, trying to imagine what it was like to be with Jesus. Peter and the other disciples have by this point spent a couple of years following Jesus, seeing him heal and feed people, hearing him teach, experiencing miracles. Yet within this last week, their time with Jesus went from a welcoming parade into Jerusalem to Jesus being betrayed by one of them, arrested, put on trial, and then put to death. 
As our gospel reading for today picks up the story, we hear that some of the women followers of Jesus go out to his tomb early in the morning, only to find the tomb empty. I imagine there was shock and confusion and maybe wondering if someone else had gotten there first or if even maybe they had the wrong tomb. And I wonder if maybe even just for a moment there was just the tiniest bit of hope, hope that Jesus hadn't died after all, that the past few days had been a nightmare and they were now waking up. But then two angels show up to tell them what they've already discovered. Jesus isn't here. He's been raised. Remember what he told you. Well, Jesus had told them so many things, some of which didn't make any sense, that they didn't understand. The women needed to be reminded of what Jesus had said about this day and these events, not because they had totally forgotten. It was more that they had had a hard time believing it was true until they were standing there with the angels in the empty tomb. Coming together for worship on Easter, whether you are here for the very first time or you return every year or something in between. Perhaps you come partly to be reminded of what Jesus said about this day, about what Jesus promised to those first disciples and to us, that death isn't the end, that God's love is forever and for everyone and for you. Now back in our story, the women were just beginning to remember that. And I can't help but wonder what it is that they talked about as they left the empty tomb and went to tell the other disciples about what they had experienced there. You know, did they spend the walk back trying to figure out what they would say, how and how to say it so that people would believe them? Or did they just kind of stumble back in silence, still trying to figure out what had happened? Somehow they shared what they had seen and heard that morning, only to have the other disciples dismiss them, think maybe they had been hallucinating in their grief, or that they were making up stories. Except for Peter. Now, we're not sure why Peter runs to the tomb, and none of the others do. The story doesn't tell us what he was thinking. Did he believe the women? Was he not sure but hoped it was true, and so he wanted to go see for himself? Did what the women say prompt his own memories of what Jesus had told them about his death and resurrection? As he ran out of the city, what was he thinking? Was Peter kind of reviewing all of his past encounters with Jesus? This is kind of what I imagine him doing. Kind of reviewing all of the time he had spent with Jesus and everything that he had seen and heard and done. Or maybe he was trying to figure out what he was gonna say to Jesus. If it was really true that he had been raised and he would see him again. But we're not sure what Peter believes after seeing the empty tomb. The story for today kind of leaves us hanging. With Jesus' tomb open and empty, angels saying, remember what Jesus told you, and Peter Wondering what had happened. Did you notice Jesus isn't in today's story at all? He doesn't show up, at least not yet. 
What if Peter wasn't wondering what had happened as much as he was wondering at what had happened? Not doubting the women's story or Jesus' promise, but instead amazed, in awe, in wonder at the reality of it being true. Whatever Peter was feeling, whatever he believed in that moment, if we keep reading in the Bible, we learn that at some point Peter not only believed, but that he began to speak publicly about Jesus and his death and resurrection, becoming a key leader in the early church. But Peter didn't always believe. He didn't always trust Jesus or understand him and the ways of this new kingdom of God that Jesus was always talking about. Sometimes he was sure and certain and committed to following Jesus. And other times Peter was confused, even saying he didn't even know Jesus at all. The empty tomb of Easter Sunday morning doesn't always or immediately create instant faith. Faith is more often something that we grow into. And it might sometimes feel like five steps forward and three steps back and wandering off the path and forgetting all about Jesus sometimes. Until... Something or someone reminds you. Remember what Jesus told you. Remember, trust, that whether you're certain or uncertain or don't believe at all, that Jesus loves you wherever you are. Yes, the miracle of Easter is the empty tomb and that Jesus was raised and that death isn't the end. But even more so, it's that people who know they're loved, they then go and share that love so that it spreads out all throughout the world, bringing hope and courage and new life. I've been using poetry instead of a prayer to wrap up my thoughts during Lent. And today's poem from Wandering Heart is called Easter Morning. I cannot stay away on Easter morning. Like Peter, I would run if I could. Stop the car, pump my arms, take the church steps two at a time, all to know. Did it happen? Did it really happen? Is evil no match for love? I'd slide down the center aisle. I'd grab the mic to ask the angels, the heavens, the children, were the stories true? And in response, the choir would sing, Alleluia. The children would flower the cross. The preacher would tell me the stone is rolled away. The people would pass the peace and welcome strangers and make room in the pews. And with faith over doubt, I would hope. For I imagine that all of that ordinary holiness would be enough for Peter and it would be enough for me. God sent us Jesus to show us how to live, to save us from our sin, and to bring us God's love. In thankfulness for Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we seek to follow him and show his love to others. If you brought a financial gift to help support this work at Grace of welcoming everyone, growing in faith, and serving others, please place it in the offering baskets that will be passed by the ushers during the next song. 
Thank you for your generous gifts through automatic withdrawal from your bank account, cash, or check that help us together to love God, gather for worship and learning, and show our love by serving others. as you're comfortable doing so. On this joy-filled day of celebration, we say this is what we believe. Although we may weep through the longest nights, we may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the burial claws and still long for more. But today... today we are, we are a people, people of hope. hope. We, we believe, believe in, in new beginnings. beginnings. We, we believe that the God who created the world is stronger than death. We believe that Jesus abides among us, healing, teaching, and leaving fingerprints throughout this world. We believe that a tomb could not hold him. We believe that the sun does rise. We believe that Peter was there with questions awe and faith the size of a tiny seed. We believe that the story is not over yet, for God is among us. Today we are a people of hope. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us prepare to pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news by singing together. to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to 
to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Jesus' love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Guide us in caring for all that you have given us, land and sea and sky, plants and insects and animals, everything that you have made. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Bring an end to war and violence. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower all who work for peace. And we pray for peace and justice. God of grace, Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day, including people, those fighting addiction. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for all who are sick, including Chuck, Audrey, Ashley, We comfort those who are grieving, including Anne at the loss of her brother, Mary at the loss of her stepmom, and Todd at the loss of his mother. And for the family of Jason Panic, as he is laid to rest on April 6th in Milwaukee. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for these people of grace this week, Audrey Hine, Leo Gashning, Ryan and Amanda Whipple, Madeline and Liam, Dan and Karen Landsverk, and for Trinity Lutheran Church of Wapaka and Pastor Andrew Barrent. For other people and concerns we name now, aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts as we sing together. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Everyone is welcome at this communion table where it is Jesus who feeds us with and is present with us in bread and wine, tangible signs of God's love and forgiveness for us. I invite you to join in our communion celebration by reading the lines in the bold print. God of today and tomorrow, God of the garden and the tomb, God of our faith and our doubt, we are running toward you. Like Peter on that first Easter morning, We simply cannot stay away. So we have come to this place, bringing with us questions, hopes, joys, and concerns. Thank you for the gifts of this world that bring joy to us, for wonder and curiosity, for the sound of your people singing together, for crowded tables and neighborly kindness, for the sun after the rain, the spring after the frost, love after loss, and faith after doubt. 
Before the joy and the alleluias of this day, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. So for the things that erode our hope, for the things that stitch doubt and fear into our hearts, we ask for your comfort and peace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered together with the disciples for supper. And as part of their time together, he took some bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying to them, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, fan the flames of our faith. Like Peter, invite us to step out of our boats. Use us to care for those in need, to tell your story, and to build a better world. And together we pray, as Jesus has taught us to do, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. When the servers are ready, we will be standing on either side in the front. We invite you to move toward the center aisle to come forward to the front. Please hold out your hand to receive the bread and then take a cup from the tray. And after eating and drinking, place your empty cups in the bowls on either side and use the side aisles to return to your seats. A couple of things that may be helpful for you to know. Um, Gluten-free bread is available. If you need that, please ask the server. In each tray, the center ring of cups holds white grape juice, and the rest of the cups hold red wine. If there are children with us who have begun to receive communion in any congregation, they are welcome to do so here at Grace. Children who haven't yet received their first Holy Communion are welcome to come to the server for a blessing. And if it is difficult for you to come to the front, we can bring the bread and wine to you. The servers will take a look around after it looks like everybody has come forward. Please help us out by giving us a nod or a wave to let us know you'd like us to come to you. And we will bring the bread and wine to where you are. Come to the table. Remember Jesus' promise. Know he is here. Jesus invited and fed everyone. No one was turned away. He promised, this is my body given for you, and I will be with you always. Come, there is always room for you here. Christ. 
King is exalted on 
Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may your curious heart lead you to new encounters with God's people. May you look for God in every face. May the Spirit always remind you, you are called, you are blessed, and you are loved. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're comfortable doing so and to join in singing. you always belong to God. Go now in peace, trusting this good news. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God.